it is hot out here in Texas. But today, I'm checking out the brand new Mercedes EQS 580. Let's go for a test drive. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we are back with another automotive test drive. Today, it is the Mercedes EQS 580. I want to give a big shout out to my boy, Corey. Um, I went to go check out his EQS 580 because Mercedes didn't send me one. But I got to say, this is a beautiful car. Now, the EQS 580 is pretty much the S class of Mercedes electric vehicles. And Mercedes basically entered into this realm and said, we're going to design something that looks great and also feels and drives great. So EQS 580 has some really nice styling to it. It's a car that when you first see it, you're going to just be wild. That front grille with the Mercedes, like, you know, emblem across really stands out. Plus, you've got that LED lighting that lights up that gives you some very nice, unique looks to it. Now, the trim around the car is nice. You've got 21 inch uh, AMG wheels, and of course those rims look pretty good, right? And then when you go across the car, all around, you've got uh, lighting at the back that is just very unique and sharp. A couple of things to note with the exterior of the car. You cannot open up the hood. Uh, there is no frunk. Mercedes does not let you open up the hood. There's no way to do that. You've probably heard that before. The only thing you can do is open up by the driver's side. That allows you to put in your wiper fluid. And then the charging port is in the passenger right-hand side at the, at the rear. So that's pretty much it. But the car looks really unique and it's got this very aerodynamic shape into it. Now, there are a bunch of cameras around the car. There are two below the front grille. There's a camera that pops up with the Mercedes logo at the back so you can actually back up. But the main thing about this car is when you step inside to check out that infotainment system. The infotainment system on the EQS can be daunting at first glance, but really it's broken into three displays. The very first here is your um, in-dash cluster, which is very simply used uh, to change your options like your recuperation, which of course we know that as regeneration, and you can do that with your paddles right here. And then you can also go ahead and change your layout. So you can change it from classic to sports, as well as also your heads up display, which is probably one of the best heads up displays I've used, which basically, you know, uh, it compensates to your height or whatever your seating levels, and it just looks really good. That's the best thing way to describe it. Moving to the center display, this is 17.7 .7 inches, massive. And this is where, of course, you have a lot of access to what you want. Now, of course, I can have my navigation right here, but I can also tap the home button and get, this gives me a plethora of options. One of them is comfort. I like this because I can, of course, go to massage and I can, activate the massager for the driver and the passenger. It's a great, simple feature, but it's absolutely fantastic here on this car. Then you've got your car settings where you can go around and play with different things in the car from, you know, your driving, your collision, assistance, look at the camera, parking in terms of parking assists, and then of course the vehicle itself and some of the vehicle functions. But one of the coolest things is the lighting system in the car here, the interior lighting, and of course, customizing that in many different ways, as well as also the ambient lighting within the car. Honestly, this is probably one of the best parts of the car. I know there's so many good things in the car, but this changes the mood and the way the car is actually framed. Now, you can see this ambient lighting all around from uh, the dashboard down all the way towards the doors underneath the uh, the handles on top of the car, by the moonroof, almost everywhere, giving you just this, this really unique look, especially when driving at night, you're really going to love this. If you get the EQS or you're driving one, go in and play with that. You can customize it in many ways to really enjoy it. I think Daniel really had a good time with this. Now, the last display here is 12 inches, and this is for the passenger, and I really love this. And some of you might say, hey, what about that center display? Look, this display allows the passenger to go in and of course, customize things without disturbing you if you're on navigation right here. So your navigation can be up and you're good to go. But the passenger has, of course, access to navigation. They can remap things for you, the comfort control. Some of the car settings are also built in there, as you can see. And then they also have the Mercedes EQ looking at you know, the battery charging, 
consumption, those kind of things. Uh, what's really funny about this layout is that you see this menu bar right here. Kind of, kind of reminds you of Windows Media Player, just an FYI there. But also there's full volume controls for the passenger here, which is actually uh, pretty cool. Absolutely love it. Now, there's one more thing about uh, this whole system. You have the Hey Mercedes uh, prompt, which will give you its voice navigation, which is probably uh, chiming right now. And it's something that works fairly well. Now, speaking of navigation, uh, Mercedes uses here maps and it's very responsive. It works pretty well so far in our use case, driving around Houston, uh, going through downtown in different areas. What I do like about it is that it's very easy to find locations. You can type it out. You can also just do that. And uh, if you want to, you can also find different charging spots directly by just tapping that as well. And it will look for charging uh, spots within your vicinity. And you can just kind of scroll through and find and plot your route. It's a great infotainment system. I love it. I love the ambient lighting that's kind of mixed in uh, as you play around with some of the controls like the AC controls. It changes as you increase. So as you're increasing on the left, it's heat. You can see it turns red and blue on the right. It's fun. You absolutely have to try it and see it for yourself. But let's go ahead and let's just pull over for a second and talk about the interior. This is where Mercedes has done some really unique stuff to it, right? So the interior of the car is really nice. You've got kind of this graphite, this car itself, the color, the graphite gray metallic look with black space gray Napa leather all around, right? Then you've also got some of this natural uh, green yacht design wood on the center panel as well as also the door handles themselves giving you this very premium look this car is not cheap and it definitely shows with the interior of this car now the seats themselves are so comfortable you've got built-in massages as we mentioned earlier plus the seats actually hug you you can go into to your comfort system and you can actually make the seats more hugging or less hugging especially if you want to drive and it's more sporty and that kind of lends into what the car is all about now yes it's an s-class and you're thinking most of the time you should be sitting at the owner's corner in the back rear uh right hand side of the car but the the front of the car feels more comfortable while the rear sitting in the rear is comfortable in this space but it doesn't feel like a luxury comfort it feels like i'm just sitting at the back of a car that's probably one of my downsides in this vehicle in the back that the comfort level of the back doesn't reach the levels as you have in the front so this makes me think this is more of a driving um s-class than anything else if you, if you want to kind of compare it to the s-class itself but that's where the difference is there now speaking of driving ooh, uh let's let's pick that up right now so driving is oof, this is where mercedes really shines so people have asked me while driving the car how does it feel what is it like does it feel like an ev no no mercedes says no we're not building an ev we're building a mercedes it just happens to be electric, right? That's that's pretty much what they've said here with this car, and I love that. So whether we're driving through uh, downtown Houston at night, just checking out uh, different parts of the city, or speeding out the highway and going through traffic, or even just driving through the neighborhood, it felt comfortable, the power and performance. Now, your zero to 60 here is in 4.1 seconds, and some of you go like, hey, look, my Tesla can go faster. It's not about that, you know, uh, speed race. It's about the totality of the car. And I've been truly impressed. Like, I, I'm, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I flew down here to check out my friend's car. And I have to say that I was truly impressed with how uh, the driving experience has felt with this car overall. I mean, from using the heads-up display which like it just matches your eyesight so well um, you know the drive system and also the acceleration the pickup the torque all that stuff really lends to saying that hey look this is a car that feels comfortable now when it comes to charging that's another thing that Mercedes has also done well you can use of course the Electrify America network on here with Mercedes it supports up to 200 kilowatt um, DC charging uh, which we definitely used and checked out now the one thing about the charging port is that once you're done uh, you have to make sure your car is open if your car isn't open uh, just make sure it's open or unlocked 
and then you want to hit that um, kind of power button next to the charger so that releases the charger for you just some you know precautions to, to make sure that that's actually cut, uh, done we also use an in-home um, two two stage charger at home uh, which also did pretty well in terms of charging speeds we did that overnight and that's something you can use with this car as well so the question is what are my final thoughts on the Mercedes EQS is it worth buying um, since there are many EV options out there, is it better than the Tesla? Look, I'm just putting it out there, I think it already is better than the Tesla. And that's just on many levels from just the interior itself. But is it worth buying? If you have the money, yes it is. Now this car that I'm driving is priced around the $120,000 mark for it now. Uh, the EQS I think starts off at like 125 and then you can build it out with different interior specs and things like that and it is worth every penny you pay for you get that premium feel within the car you get that premium driving experience with the car it feels like driving a mercedes uh that is just electric powered um and i think a lot of people are going to experience that in new ways now uh that infotainment system is eye-catching one of the cool things about it is that once you're parked on the on the passenger side you can go ahead and play some games daniel went ahead and played some tetris got to like level seven eight or something like that so uh that's something that you can easily do with this uh to actually just just get more of this vehicle it's honestly a great drive overall yes i know people will mention the the Teslas or maybe the Lucy's which I haven't tried uh, but for me this definitely hits the mark and says yes Mercedes wasn't playing and wasn't joking around saying that they were here to deliver an absolutely fantastic vehicle now guys if you enjoyed this videos let me know I love to do more car videos like this do some test drives join me on the journey and also I uh, also want to give a big shout out to Daniel as well as also my boy Corey because they Daniel did an awesome job. It was super hot here in Texas. So just just again, thank you very much guys and always enjoy your entertainment.